In this video, I would like to explain conductivity of solutions which is measured in a chemical laboratory by all chemists throughout the globe day in and day out. Just as in solids, liquids also offer resistance to the flow of electric charge. As in solids, here also Ohm's law holds good which say that the potential difference across the liquid is proportional to the current flowing. Therefore, the ratio of potential difference to current flowing is the constant of proportionality called the resistance. If potential difference is measured in volts, current in amperes, then resistance is in ohms. Resistance of a solid conductor is proportional to the length of the conductor and inversely proportional to the cross section of the conductor. The proportionality constant rho is called the specific resistance or resistivity. Unit of resistivity is ohm centimeter. Conductance is the reverse of resistance and its unit is ohm inverse or Mohs or simen. Conductivity is the reverse of resistivity and its unit is ohm inverse centimeter inverse or Mo centimeter inverse or simen centimeter inverse and is denoted by kappa. Note that conductivity is nothing but the conductance of one centimeter cube of solution. We all know that conductivity meters are used for this purpose. Most conductivity meters have two electrodes in what is called conductivity cell with known cell constant. After dipping the conductivity cell in solution of unknown conductivity, we pass an AC source to the terminals. The ions present in the solution move like this to carry the current. The more the ions in the solution, more current is carried. So more is the conductance. Conductance multiplied by the cell constant gives the conductivity. Here L is the separation between electrodes and A is the cross section of the electrodes. While measuring conductivity, we should keep in mind that the ions of the solution may chemically interact with the electrodes causing error in conductivity measurements due to polarization. This effect is reduced or prevented by these methods. Temperature of the solution is another aspect which lead to false conductivity measurement. To perform correct conductivity measurements, a temperature sensor must be used such that the conductivity may be displayed at a reference temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. Cable correction should also be done while measuring conductivity of solutions having very low conductivity. Normally, we do not measure L and A for a cell to measure its cell constant. We rather measure the conductance of a solution with known conductivity and calculate the cell constant from there. Molar conductivity is the conductance of a solution having a certain concentration. But the volume taken for measuring conductance should contain one mole of solute. So if one molar concentration solution is taken, then conductance of 1000 ml should be measured. And if two molar concentration solution is taken, then conductance of 500 ml solution should be measured. This is because 500 ml of two molar solution contain one mole of solute. This molar conductivity is denoted by lambda m. Equivalent conductivity is the conductance of that volume of solution which contain one gram equivalent of the solute and is denoted by lambda e. Conductivity is the conductance of 1 ml solution whereas molar conductivity is the conductance of 1000 divided by C ml of solution where C is the concentration in moles per liter. Therefore, we get this formula. So the unit of molar conductivity is ohm inverse centimeter square mole inverse or simen centimeter square mole inverse. It is obvious from the formula that molar conductivity will rise with dilution because the increase in conductivity is more than compensated by the concentration term in the denominator. For strong electrolytes, a mathematical relation between concentration C and molar conductivity lambda m was derived by Debye Huckel on Sager. 
the constant a depend on temperature dielectric constant and viscosity of the solvent when a graph was plotted it showed almost a straight line for strong electrolytes the molar conductivity for strong electrolyte increase with dilution it is obvious because the interionic forces are bound to reduce at lower concentrations assuming ionization to be complete for all concentrations for strong electrolytes at very low concentration molar conductivity has reached its limiting value this is also referred to as the molar conductivity at infinite dilution due to straightness of the curve this limiting value of molar conductivity can be determined by extrapolating it to zero concentration we are given this data from this we calculate the square root of concentration molar conductivity lambda m is taken as the ordinate square root of concentration is taken as abscissa now we draw the points taking values from the given data finally draw a straight line by joining these points and extrapolate it until it touches the ordinate this intercept is measured and the measured value is the limiting molar conductivity of kcl at infinite dilution for weak electrolytes the graph is not a straight line so limiting molar conductivity cannot be calculated by graphical methods of extrapolation in this case cold rush's law of independent migration of ions is utilized this law states that limiting molar conductivity of an electrolyte is the sum of individual contributions of the anion and cation of the electrolyte this conclusion have been drawn from the following set of results the difference between limiting molar conductivities of kcl and kbr was found to be the same as the difference between limiting molar conductivities of nacl and nabr thus if we know the limiting molar conductivities of strong electrolytes like sodium acetate hydrochloric acid and sodium chloride we may easily calculate the limiting molar conductivity of a weak electrolyte like acetic acid let's look into the following table where limiting molar conductivity of different cations and anions are given these values were measured by the knowledge of transport numbers of ions which depend on electrical mobility There are also other application of cold rush's law. Number 1, determination of degree of dissociation of weak electrolytes. Oswald's dilution law states that degree of dissociation is inversely proportional to the square root of concentration for weak electrolytes. Therefore, degree of dissociation increases with dilution. At infinite dilution, complete dissociation is expected, and that is the reason why cold rush's law can be applied to weak electrolytes. The degree of dissociation of weak electrolyte can be calculated by measuring the molar conductivity of weak electrolyte at a particular concentration and dividing it with limiting molar conductivity at infinite dilution. Number 2, calculation of dissociation constant of weak electrolytes. Dissociation constant is measured by substituting degree of dissociation alpha with this value as shown below. Number 3 determination of solubility of sparingly soluble salt make a saturated solution of a sparingly soluble salt measure the conductivity of that solution and calculate the limiting molar conductivity from cold rush's law then get the molarity from this formula multiply with molecular weight and get the solubility in grams per liter number 4 determination of ionic product of water measure the conductivity of pure water which is this Now 18 ml of water contains 18 g or 1 g mole of water so the molar conductivity is this the limiting molar conductivity is calculated to be this therefore degree of dissociation is 1.817 into 10 to the power minus 9 now concentration of h plus ion is equal to the concentration of oh minus ions which is equal to concentration of pure water in moles per liter multiplied by the degree of dissociation Now molarity of pure water is 1000 divided by 18 which is equal to 55.55 therefore concentration of H plus ion is approximately 1 into 10 to the power minus 7 therefore ionic product of water is calculated to be 1 into 10 to the power minus 40 number 5 prediction of conductivity of unknown concentration of a solute for low concentrations only say we are going to predict the conductivity of 12 ppm solution of kcl 12 ppm means 0.012 grams kcl in 1000 ml which is equal to 1.61 to 10 to the power minus 4 moles per liter 
Limiting molar conductivity calculated from core Russell's law is 149.8. Therefore, conductivity is calculated from this formula and found to be 24.12 microsiemens per centimeter, which is almost equal to the measured quantity.